Hello, I'm Emmanuel Eftemiu, European Research Manager at Unquote, Europe's longest running private equity publication. With me is Peter Schwartz, partner at international law firm Wild Gottschall. And today we're discussing high yield and its application in the European buyout market. Hi, Peter. Hi, Emmanuel. Now, high yield has had a few false starts in the European market. Um, while it seems in the US, it's much more established. So what would you say are the main differences between Europe and US when it comes to high yield? Well, in the US, the high yield market really started in, in earnest in the 80s with uh, Milken and the buyout boom. And high yield was, was seen to be a uh, uh, finance tool for, for doing the buyouts and, and what a lot of the big firms were using. Um, and it stayed that way, and the market, the capital markets there are very deep, they're very liquid, um, and that hasn't been the case so much in Europe, where bank lending has been a, you know, the, the relationship banking in Germany, Italy, in, and in the UK um, has been the, the bedrock of private equity and, and buyouts. Um, and so there have been uh, different waves of high yield. Um, we, we like to call this version 3.0. The first one was the telecoms. Um, in, in 98, 99, 2000, um, and media, that, that died down um, after the internet crash and a lot of those bonds defaulted. And then there was some done on the bigger private equity deals, um, 2004, 2005, 2006, 2007, that the market was shut for a year and a half and now it's opened up again with a lot of refinancings. Exactly, so in what, what situations are we seeing high yield being used at the moment then? Uh, I mean, it's, it's primarily refinancings. There's been a couple of new money deals, um, but primarily we've seen a lot of refinancing of old deals, and particularly um, people who already have high yield out, outstanding yeah. are refinancing that, doing taps of bonds, so doing new, new, new money, maybe refinancing their, their existing uh, uh, loans. Um, the question is whether that will, you know, that will continue on and move on to other parts of the market. So apart from refinancings, where, I mean, there's talk that is being used in, in primary transactions now as well. Now, what would be the issues um, that are involved in, in, in using high yield in, in primary transactions then? Yeah, you mean private equity or in? Uh, in, in, in private equity, that would be. Yeah, in, in, in a private equity transaction, um, the, the interesting part has been in, in, in the U.S., a lot of the deals have been done so that you, when you're doing your acquisition, you try and close the bond at the same time you do the acquisition. So you get the financing or you do close the bond early so you make sure that you have your financing ready for uh, closing of the acquisition. Mm -hmm. um, in Europe, traditionally, the way that high, high yields financed private equity buyouts has been a bridge bond model where banks have provided a bridge loan um, and then at, at, that's for closing and then three to six months later, the uh, bond, will t they, they go out to investors and the bond takes out the bridge. Um, okay. And now the big, the big issue with, um, with that is that banks are much less willing to do those bridge loans th mm -hmm. than they were in the past, but the bond market's still open. And so the question is, are people going to now start do, using the U.S. model? And the things that, that, are, that come along with that, the issues that come along with that are things like asking for financing outs in your, uh, in your share purchase agreement, in your acquisition agreement. Um, in other words, you know, ask, go, going and if you're the, the buyer, basically telling the seller that you, you want, as a condition precedent, your ability to do financing under a bond or something like that. Have there been any recent examples of this? Or? In the States, there are many. In, okay. Europe, in Europe, there are people, a lot of people thinking about them, and we've seen term sheets and things like that. Yeah. Um, what, one thing that, one, one place where people are really considering it is where there's, there's vendor financing in place. And okay. so, or ven the vendor financing looks good. So, you know, the, the person who's selling is, it would be willing to set, basically take some debt on in order for the, for the purchaser to buy the company. Um, and and the, the people are thinking about, well, maybe we can take out that vendor financing with a bond, or maybe we can do a bond and have the vendor financing as the bridge or the backstop mm. for, for, the, for financing the transaction. And for transaction sizes, is there a certain transaction size where high yield makes sense then? Well, certainly anything under 200 million euros is, is going to be on the, on the small side and it'll mm -hmm. be a little expensive to try and get that done for, for that small a, a financing. But um, uh, it's certainly between the 200 million and up to 
Heidelberg Cement just refinanced its bonds for 2.5 billion euros. Right. Um, that that's sort of the top that we've seen. Uh, I mean, uh, if you ask um, uh, the bankers what they think they can get done for a, for a an acquisition, th they'll tell you probably around a billion. Now, whether or not they'll be willing to bridge that billion wow. to do a bridge loan is another another question. But mm -hmm. closing into closing into equity or closing into the bond is something that that they would definitely um, think that they could get done for that price for the right credit. In terms of um, thinking about the debt structure, I mean, what are the advantages then of, of using high yield in your debt structure compared to other types of uh, leverage that you could apply to? Uh, well, the, 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 the primary advantage is that the covenants are always looser. And it's, it's hard for, uh, they're different. They're mm -hmm. what we call incurrence covenants as opposed to maintenance covenants. The bank loans have maintenance covenants, which basically mean that you have to maintain a certain level of of, uh, of, of say, uh, debt to EBITDA, or you have to, you, you can't breach the covenants. Um, in high yield, the, the way the covenants work is that you have to try and breach them. And, and a lot of deals that were done in Europe in 2000, at the end of 2006 to the beginning of 2007 took this and they called them covenant light. And so high yield bonds are basically always covenant light. Um, and, and so it's always looser covenants. And the reason is is because you don't want to have to go to bondholders to get amendments, um, which is very difficult to do. So the, pro the, the thing is that it's very difficult to trip the covenants, other than a payment default, but that, that there's clearly something wrong yeah. there. Um, <laughs> but if you do need a covenant, for, if you do need a, a, an amendment for some reason, it's, it's much more expensive and it a, a much, takes a lot more time to, to try and get that, that amendment. It seems there are quite a few advantages. So just finally crystal ball time. Right. Is, is, is high yield here to stay then? Is, is that the new resurgence now, the third wave that might stay? It's certainly the product that people are looking to right now is the thing where this may be the thing where they can finance private equity transactions um, because the banks are not open for lending right now. Right. Um, uh, however, I'd say the European investor market is not that deep. Um, there's been a lot of reliance still on the U.S. market. Mm -hmm. um, the question is: Is will that develop? Will there be more more investors, you know, looking for to, to purchase, you know, these sort of buyout bonds and and uh, things that have been sold for a long time in the U.S. and that's that's developing and it's, it's hopefully something that we'll see uh, moving on as as investors, you know, get more used to those those types of assets. I guess the next 12 to 18 months might be quite important. To yes, I think so. I think we'll, we're going to see certainly a lot of issuance at the end of this this year. Um, which is going to be mostly refinancing, but also some a, a few new names, um, and then the, the, as that we'll see how the, what happens in first quarter next year, second quarter next year for for how that develops and where where that's going. Well, thanks for talking to us, Peter. Thank you for having me. And thanks for watching. I'm Emmanuel Ftemur at Unquote, and with me today was Peter Schwartz, partner at international law firm Wild Gotchal.